here. Uh, and uh, Bob is the executive director now of the Essex and Morris Mental Health Association. Uh, I have to keep remembering these little details, uh, but it's an important piece. So, Bob Davison. Thank you, Richard. My mother told me, and I'm sure your mother told you, that you can judge someone's character by what they do when no one's looking. And I recall about two years ago, I was at a Penn Station in Newark to visit Michelle Walsh, who was working for New Jersey Transit as a homeless case manager at the time. And I was sitting for one since we were about to get a ticket. At that time, I saw Congressman Payne enter Penn Station. And as he walked in, he was by himself, and no one was looking, and most people didn't know who he was. And he took the time to speak to individuals that were homeless as a result of mental illness, that were homeless as a result of addiction, and he gave them his card. I wasn't surprised to see that, because I've had the opportunity to work with the congressman for years before he was a congressman, he was a freeholder and a councilman, and before that uh, with his late father, who was outstanding on our issues, and in fact was a member of the board of the Mental Health Association of Essex County. So I knew that representing individuals with mental illness and representing individuals with addictions who were in need of affordable housing was not something that he faked. It was something that was authentic, it was something he valued, it was something he believed in, and it was something he felt was important to do. So accordingly, the Congressman does not need a policy speech from me on the McKinley Vento Homeless Assistance Grants, on Medicaid, on Home Investment Partnerships, on Section 8 Housing Choice Vouchers, on the National Housing Trust Fund, on tax reform, or on the importance of low-income housing tax credit. The congressman can give me a policy speech and give us a policy speech on all these issues because he believes in them and he knows how important they are to the individuals that he represents in his district, all of the individuals in his district, those that are homeless, those that are renting, and those that suffer from mental illness and from addiction. I'm proud he's our representative, and I'm proud of all of my friends. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I also forgot to mention that uh, Bob and uh, Kevin, uh, who was up before, uh, were the ones who headed the, uh, uh, when Governor Cody was governor, headed the uh, mental health task force, and the reason we had a supportive housing fund then was because of them, and that's a fight we have to win after this election because we've got to get a new governor who will refund it so we can go out and try Good morning, everybody. My name is Mr. Trickle, and I just want to say thank you to the man above who's had to give some of my great set of ad um, adversity for life. A special shout out to Richard Brown, my housing, for giving me this opportunity. The Guardian Angel nonprofit groups that rallied around me with many varied supports. Shakina Hope, Director of Bridges Project Connect, Keith Williams, Coordinator and Staff, Ronald Brown, Intern Phil all of, all of NJCRI, uh, and their Dropping Center, Project Live, Debbie Underwood and Tanisha, uh, and Dean Leonard Prentice, Center of Occupational Learning Pool School. And last but not least, Arnold Cohen, Board Member, and Renee Kay, Current Director of Ed Poverty Network. Thank you. All of us to be here today. Yet the homeless counts may have statistically gone down. 
but the unaccounted homeless, those that are staying on the couch in someone else's house, who are literally on the streets, unable to pay, obtain a voucher, these numbers have not gone down. We need desperate relief, and we need it now. When you leave here to get today, I hope you will remember my face as the new face of homelessness, someone that's worked, had a good job, and had to quit uh, their job just to receive a voucher. 35,000 vouchers went out to Essex County uh, between Mental Health and Bridge Price Connect receiving five. And effective July 1st of this year, 2017, I received my housing voucher, and guess what that is? And all those that are fighting for the billions of dollars of cuts, please don't make the working class people like us have to continue to constantly choose between a roof or medication. That's all. God bless you. Representative Fiscal in the Hudson County portion of the district. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Bales. I'm a 52-year-old mother and grandmother, and I became homeless in January of 2016. This was my second time being homeless. The first time, I had five children that were in school, homeless for five months. We slept on the bus, that I, and I was working. We slept on the bus, we slept on floors, we slept wherever we could. My children ended up having to be split up. Thank God somebody saw a need, and they helped us. But even in that, I struggled paying rent. We went from house to house to house. I got a job, and I was able to see them through all the way through. They're all grown, they have children of their own. As of June 8th of 2015, I lost my job. I was terminated. That January, I lost my housing because I had no income. If it had not been for the grace of Episcopal Make it away from me, I would be out on the streets right now. It is stressful. It is stressful. You say, go get a job. How can I go get a job when my, my nerves is on edge? Where am I going to lay my head for the night? How am I going to prepare myself for the job? I thank God and I thank the people who made a way for me. We need, we need this funding. We need not for them to cut it because it's me and many others that are out there that are struggling. Even just to have a studio apartment, it is hard. Its cost is high. We need the funding to, to, to continue on. It, it, it's, I, I know people that have a homeless now, and it's not easy. I'm in the process right now as of August 14th. I will be going to school, become a certified nurse's aide. <laughs> My mind is at ease, and I'm able to go and t take this train so that I can get a job, so that I can get into housing, but I still need the help. I still need help. We should not cut that funding, but we need to push for them not to cut the funding. Thank you. you're in the tenth district or your state organization or you work there or you would love to be able to be there, come behind us because we would love to get a great photograph to show everybody of how important it is to have Congressman Payne with us. Congressman Payne. Let me start. It's a real honor and a privilege that way. But the Democrats have never left the side of the people that need services. Because you see, the majority, it only matters to them when it impacts them personally. That's right. Until they find yourself in that situation, they don't care. They they're like, well, you know, hey, I made it. You pull yourself up. You know, hey, look, I look how rich I am. You know, you can do it too. It's baloney. Exactly. It's garbage. It's garbage. There's always been people in this country on the margin because of the type of government, because of the type of system that there is, there always has to be a have-not. And the gap is just growing. And more people are finding themselves 
that were in the middle class and upper middle class sliding to the areas that our communities have been in all their lives. So they're experiencing now and somehow, oh well, the, the Democrats have walked away from, from the majority of people and we're going to be Republicans because the Democrats, it's nonsense. You wait to see what happens. I heard something six months ago where um, uh, this person said that they're going to they're gonna be the greatest job creator yeah. that they're ever part. You're going you're gonna to win, you're going to win so much, you're going to get tired of winning. And we're still waiting. Why he enriches himself, charging the Secret Service to stay in his hotel and take him back. Why they go on ski trips? That's right. To Dubai. On our dime. On our dime. Yes. The president should be protected, regardless of who it is. Yes. I know we don't agree with this president, but we have to have respect for the office. Yes. And there are certain things that should be in place, even though we don't like who it is. But there's a line, ladies and gentlemen, where you're going over and accept of what you should be doing. So I'm here to let you know that you know sometimes constituents come up to me and like, well, I got something to tell you. I got an earful for you, and I, I don't back down. Look, <laughs> tell me what you need to tell me because I work for you. You represented you. You asked me to represent you. So if I don't listen to you, how do I convey your feelings, the things you're going through, on the floor of Congress? Now, I'm no big policy wonk, but I know how to fight. That's right. Between my uncle and my father, I had great teachers. That's right. My father, my father was a diplomat, but my uncle, ooh. Ooh. So, I'm here to tell you, don't let them tell you that we've walked away from them. Don't let them tell you that we're not in this together. Don't let them tell you that we don't have your best interests at heart. Because that's what we're here for. I see it every day. I've been fortunate. I lost my job in 1989 as my father went to Congress. The job I had for 10 years closed. I had to move back home. But I was fortunate. I had a father that I could go back home to at 30. Amen. But I never, but I never lose sight and thank God for that man that taught me too much is given, much is expected. There's nothing special about you that you don't have to look at people and put yourself in their position. Mm -hmm. And so that is what, that has been what has helped me get to this point. Because I fight for people, I understand that I've been given a lot. And there are people that don't have the opportunities I've had. So it's my obligation to do everything I can do to make sure that they have those same opportunities. So, you know, Mr. Cologne will tell you, I don't talk a lot on the floor, I don't do a lot, I'm not the great orator from New Jersey, but I'm here every single day fighting, and people know what the people in the 10th Congressional District know, because I make sure that the Congress knows what we need in our community. We've been joined by another great member of the New Jersey delegation, I saw Leonard Lance walk in. Let me say something about Leonard Lance. Yes, he is in the majority party, but he has not forgotten the people of New Jersey. Yeah. 
and he has fought for the interest of his constituents. When he has to go no against his party, he does the right thing. And so I just want to put that out there because just because people are in a certain position doesn't necessarily mean that they do not vote their constituents' conscience. And Leonard Lance does that every single day. Let me tell you, any success I've had with getting bills moved forward and initiatives that I want, Leonard Lance, I, I come to him and I say, Leonard, I need this. You know, I'm trying to, and he just says, oh, Donald, please, and sign it. <laughs> but he has that much faith in me that it's something that's right, and I will not forget him for that. I've been successful because of people like Donald Norcross, people like Frank Ballone, who have taken me under their wing because I was the son of someone, mm -hmm. and they have just reached out and taught me the ropes, and I am successful today because of all of these people around me and because of you. Keep me in your prayers, and I'm gonna to continue to fight for what's right. Every person should have the right to live in a home in this country that is clean, safe, and allows you to be part of what this great country has to offer. Thank you.